Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Demo May Cry 2 Mission 13. The hunter will learn to feel with a leap of faith. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. What does that even mean? Oh, well, here's a cutscene. Kill me! That man is going to bring me the Arcana shortly. You will live to see that. <laughs> That's just a piece of crap. Oh, Arcana. Here's another three for you. No! Crap like that doesn't interest me. But... Your swan song will. So now we're here, Lucia's here. Story just kind of jumps around places. It's really jarring sometimes. I guess this is a little bit more clear if you play Lucia's campaign simultaneously with Dante's. But their campaigns are otherwise just so similar with a couple key differences that it's not fun to do. So we're fighting Arius. He's kind of been presented to us as like the main villain or maybe at least like a secondary antagonist who's being manipulated by some greater demonic force that we're not really privy to yet. This isn't a very interesting or challenging fight. Sometimes he'll teleport. I'd like him to do that at least once before the fight ends. So there we go. Uh, he can teleport around the room at random, sipping his wine. I kind of like him. I must obtain the power of Argosax, or I cannot transcend all living things. Too easy. You cannot win. Someone is holding you. Forget about me. Kill Arius. Don't worry. I've got you. Where was all that power during the fight? Oh, there's a lot wrong with that scene. I still kind of like Arius. I don't know why. I mean, he's a chump, but I like him a little bit. Why did you save me? I was created by him. Every hero has a weakness. But the ritual was activated because of me. There's still time. We have until the sun is completely eclipsed. But... How are you going to enter the building? The entrance is... Where there's a will, right? Okay, so that prelude cutscene between Mission 13 and 14 kind of sets up where we're going with the story, or it, it, it kind of contextualizes what happened. So Arius wants all of these arcane relics that Dante brought him so that he can use them in a ritual with the Eclipse to somehow use this power of this great demonic force named Argusax that he's been, as far as we know, manipulated by uh, in order to take Argusax's power for his own. By the way, he's some kind of wizard uh, who also owns a big multinational corporation. So that's that's that. I mean, it's kind of more of a plot dump than anything we've had up to this point. It's also preposterous. Whatever. That's Devil May Cry. I mean, that's the most Devil May Cry thing that's happened in this whole game so far, is the preposterous-ass story. 
Uh, this mission, the first time I did it, I really hated. But in retrospect, it's not really that bad. Uh, so... The goal here... You might notice we're in, like, a purple demon-y version of the, uh, of the streets from the first mission. Our goal here is to go around the city streets from mission one, activating four different switches. The first one was back there, you just make a quick little right from the beginning. Uh, and that's the hardest one. The, th that, to me, is the hardest switch to find. The rest of them are pretty straightforward. Um, but the first time I did this, I had the hardest time finding that first switch. I well, I walked right past it. Uh, the second one is back here. This is where I believe we got, what was it called? The Iron Door Key or something? Am I thinking of Mikalash? Probably. We got a key from a fight in this arena last time we were here. Uh, but now there's a switch. But I want to clear out all the Bronomancers and the, the uh, demons... The Mishra Demons, there we go. Uh, the Bronomancers and the Demons. Because while I attempt to activate the switch by hitting it, they'll screw my targeting up. And that's no fun at all. What is Bronomancy anyway? Thunder? Yeah, no, um... Not the lightning. Should be lightning, right? No, I can't remember if it's lightning or thunder now. Either way, it was predicted by Brontomancy. There's your obligatory Gyromancer reference. Oh, I fucking love you, Silent Hill 1. Both when you're being horrific and when you're being silly. Uh, this is why I mean when I say they screw the targeting up. Um, I mentioned at some point they... I found out you can hold R2 down to unlock the targeting, and uh, Dante will just swing in the direction you're facing. It's still messy here, because you have to hit the switch so many times in a row. Uh, the R2 solution is messy with these. And they eventually deplete. So, like, you see the, the dials on the switches turning purple as you hit the orb? If you let it go for enough time, they'll go back to white and deactivate. So you have to hit it constantly until uh, it's triggered. So it's easier to just clear the arena out than try to activate the switch while there are enemies nearby. And hey, there's a red orb mountain. Uh, I don't like that combo doesn't quite lock onto the fountain. That's why I prefer the six hit string or the uh, the four hit string that you that kind of ends with the uh, high time, the three hits into high time. Uh, we got Savage Golems. We haven't seen them since Mission 2? One of the really early missions. It's been a bit since they've been around. Uh, remember, they are the enemies that can regenerate themselves if you let them go too long. So, best to take them out as quickly as possible. I think that one that I just shot at is... Nope, it's not dead. Oh, well. Managed to finish it anyway. Eventually, they'll just, like, they'll go into their little tiny forms, crawl, run away and regenerate all of their health. Uh, and this is another situation where we're right next to a switch, but it's much easier to just take all the enemies around it out before you try to activate it. Otherwise, targeting system being wonky. There it is. You'd see the uh, golem crawling to regenerate because uh, I didn't finish them off. Uh, the wonky targeting system will kind of act as an obstacle to activating the switch. If you leave enemies alive. Oh, man. This kind of has the Dragon Age 2 problem, where... You know what? Let me run that back. Uh, Dragon Age 2 had good combat. Um, for the Devil May Cry series, this one has kind of poor combat. Not terrible overall, but not great either. Um, when you compare it to Devil May Cry 1, it's not very good, and when you especially compare it to Devil May Cry 3 and 4, which came later, uh, it's pretty bad. 
Um, but what I mean is, it has the Devil Make, it has the Dragon Age 2 problem. Where, I guess the combat's final and so, I don't know, I, I'm kind of all over the place with my thoughts on this. It's not atrocious. <laughs> um, the problem isn't the combat itself sometimes, though. The problem isn't always just the combat itself. Sometimes the combat itself is problematic, but that's not always what the problem is. Uh, sometimes it's how many enemies in how many waves it throws at you. To the point where it becomes tedious, as opposed to rewarding or satisfying. So even if you like the combat, they throw the same couple of enemies at you over and over again, and it feels like some of these these uh, sequences are just endless. Like this one coming up here. Um, I'm gonna try to bypass this one. There are a couple pyromancers who spawned in. If I can get this to work right, oh man, am I just gonna waste all my trigger? Fuck. Yeah, this is me being bad, kinda. Ah, I should have unlocked in the air. That was my problem. Because I was still locked onto the guys on the ground. You just, it like, so it reorients, reorients you even in the air. If I had held R2 down, I probably could have uh, used some round trips in midair with the Demon Heart to activate the switch without having to kill all these enemies. Um, if there was if there was greater variety in the enemies, I don't think having this many of them show up per combat sequence would be so tedious. But because the enemy variety really isn't all that great, um, and the combo system is kind of limited with what you can do with it to open it up, it winds up feeling a bit tedious. Oh, hey, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the Oromancers do as opposed to the Brontos, which cast Lightning Bolts, and the Pyromancers, which use Fire. I'm not sure what the Oromancers do. I think the Oromancers are probably my favorite enemies. They're like good, squishy, frail motherfuckers who attack in kind of a variety of ways. Uh, this time, this one you just kind of have to grit and bear it and slash it with high time, like the very first switch. If you have enough trigger gauge, you can aerial heart this one, but I was stupid and I wasted all of mine. So that's not going to be an option for us. So we double jump, helm breaker. We double jump, helm breaker. And that's it. So if you're keeping track, that was four switches hit. And we can proceed through this door. This is actually really well laid out if you follow uh, the correct order of switches. If you don't miss the very first one. Because uh, this leads you to the very last switch, which happens to be by the door you need uh, to hit the switches to get to, to get through. And for doing all that, we get to fight Phantom again! Man, this is a sight for sore eyes! I know a lot of people get bummed out because there's no, like, goofy pre-fight whipping going on between Dante and Phantom. And that's kind of emblematic of Dante's new, sullen, mopey bullshit design. But, I don't know, I never cared for the DMC1 banter before the fights anyway. And I don't really care about Dante's character. Uh, so even if he is mopey and shitty in this one, like, I'm happy enough just seeing Phantom. Um, this is the appropriate amount of nostalgia. Of just like, there is no reason whatsoever for you to be fighting Phantom as opposed to any original unique boss. Uh, but it's just like, it's a welcome return. So Phantom fights almost exactly like he does in Devil May Cry 1. He's got the tail, he's got the fireballs. Uh, you can hop on his back. I don't think if you hop on his back you could do critical damage to him like you could in DMC 1. The, uh, the only change I don't like about this version of the Phantom fight is that you can no longer reflect his fireballs that he spits at you. Uh, hopefully I can maintain this rank and finish him like that. It'd be nice to get one S rank for uh, chapter completion in this. 
Oh no! When he's blocking his face with his stone arms, uh, shooting him doesn't actually keep the combo up because uh, no damage is being done. That's my mistake. Oh, well, we'll finish this off. Clean, simple fight. Happy to see Phantom again. Not a bad fight either. It's kind of hard when you're just kind of almost copy and pasting an enemy from a previous game to screw that up, especially when it's Phantom. Uh, so we'll save up and head on to mission 15 before we end the episode. I think this is a pretty short mission. This is one that I personally hate, though. They swarm. Uh, before we do that, though, can't afford another purple orb. I'm probably not going to buy another blue orb for a bit. So, we start this one off in the same spot that we finished the last mission. Uh, and that's because we need to hit this big gross eye in the middle of the arena again. This time, instead of fighting Phantom again, it reveals a big nasty Sarlacc pit. Uh, we have a timer, and we have a bunch of enemies spawning in. So the goal here is to defeat all of the enemies before the timer runs out. We're not really... Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do that. To be honest, I'm a little bit confused about how this section works. I just kill enemies until everything ends. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that in one three-minute wave. Especially not with what I'm trying to accomplish here which is using Stinger to push a bunch of enemies into that uh, big round mound. If you push three different enemies onto the mound, you will get a new heart. This one goes into the third row of hearts, I believe, uh, and it's the Chrono Heart, which is like the Bangle of Time from Devil May Cry 1, except it's not nearly as hard to get and it's a lot more powerful because it works on bosses. Um. It is insanely powerful for being so easy to find. It's just that you get it pretty late in the game, although not at the very end. Uh, compared to the Bangle of Time, you actually get it kind of early. Uh, but again, it does work on bosses, which makes it very, very powerful. Uh, and the way you activate it is you go into Devil Trigger, and you just slash the sword. Uh, the Chrono Heart stops time whenever you are hitting the, uh, the attack button. So it is, uh, it's hard to, to overstate just how good it is. Uh, but anyway, we're going back to slaughtering waves and waves of enemies. I'm not, again, I'm not entirely sure how this one works. Uh, because the timer is most likely going to run out on me. I might finish this wave when we, when we hit the eye to start a new timer and a new set of waves of enemies. We're gonna get different spawns, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm just not sure how that works. It's much easier to explain this as kill enemies as fast as you can and just hope that it all ends. Um, I've killed all of the enemies in this sequence before the timer has run out before and not progress the level until I've started over and killed another wave of enemies before, so... I'm not sure if, it, if you just have to kill a fixed number of enemies and they progressively get... Uh, if the spawns progressively get harder, or what it is. It's not super clear. Uh, all that I know is just kill stuff and eventually the level will end. Um, I remember the first time I did this, though, it went on for a really long time. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen again. But the length of time that this went on the first time I did it is the reason that I didn't like this one so much. So we're approaching the end of our first three minutes. Pick closes back up. And the eye returns. So we'll hit the eye again. That'll trigger another three minutes on the clock with the same cutscene that I can't skip.
Yeah, this could have been skippable. But now that we've hit it a second time after clearing the first wave, we get entirely different enemy spawns. That's, I think, what confuses me about this. And it's not... Like, they aren't progressively more difficult spawns, either. These are easier than the Abyss Goats we were fighting towards the end of the last wave. But they're not the easy enemies that we were fighting at the beginning of that wave, either. So do they just... Uh... I don't know. Use the submachine guns a little bit. Because we haven't upgraded the SMG, it's not quite that powerful. I think they're only slightly weaker than Ebony and Ivory. Uh, but Ebony, Ebony and Ivory are only semi-automatic, whereas the SMGs are fully automatic. So that's the trade-off you get. Then again, Devil Trigger firing is fully automatic anyway. Okay, we still do have more enemies. I thought I cleared it out and the timer was just still going down for a sec. That wouldn't have been right. Oh, if this goes on too long, I will wind up fast forwarding through all of this. I think the first time I did this, I thought, hey, the Abyss. Oh no, these are just blood goats, so they're not even the strongest variety, which are Abyss goats. I think the first time I did this, what I was thinking of was that you had to clear the entire wave out before the timer ends, but that doesn't do the trick. So it's not like you just clear the wave before the timer ends and you win. Or at least that's only one component of it, if that's the case. If I end up having to do a third wave... Uh, I will be fast-forwarding through that. Oh, Puyi is in the sky. I can go twice as high. Ah, I missed with the Helmbreaker. Something about depth perception in this game is so, so hard to judge. I hope that was it. Yeah, so now we can jump into the Sarlacc pit, and that will end the mission. Mission clear. So that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.